Now, reactions are still coming in following Thursday's Supreme Court decision in Nigeria upholding President Bola Tinubu's February election victory. The People's Democratic Party, or PDP, which is the party of one of the main opposition challengers, Atiku Abubakar, who sought to overturn the result, has said it is appalled, disappointed and alarmed by the judgment and gravely concerned by the court's reasoning, which the party says is against the provisions of the Nigerian constitution. But given the fact that the Supreme Court has now put to rest the most intense election battle Nigeria has seen in decades, and that President Tinubu now has a firm mandate to lead, what's the point of continuing to moan louder than moaning Myrtle? Well, for more on this, I'm joined now in the studio by the PDP stalwart and former Director General of the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria, Dr. Ladan Salih. Good to see you. Thank you for having me, Charles. You're smiling. I thought you'd be weeping. No, no, no. <laughs> certainly, I wouldn't weep. So your reaction to this verdict, you must be at the very least disappointed. Well, let me say from the onset that I am deeply shocked and um, saddened by the outcome as explained you know by the pdp national publicity secretary in his press release um, where he said you know clearly that um, it is a sad commentary on our own democratic culture and uh, on our own you know uh, history as a nation that is trying to up the ante in both politics and political socialization it does appear that um, we take one step forward and several steps backward. I am very, very uh, shocked and saddened because um, it would appear to me. And let me set the record straight from the onset. I have high regards for the judiciary, the Supreme Court, the apex court in the land. I want to say that there was a judgment but we don't necessarily agree with the integrity of the judgment there's nothing we can do about the judgment mm. it has been passed and we must as um, democrats as people who believe in um, the supremacy of the law as people who are given to civil order and uh, quality disposition to debates and discussions as way out, we bow down to the majesty of the judicial process. Uh, literally, I would say that our hands are tied. But I want to assure you that our mouths will not be quiet in the face of um, what we see clearly mm. as a miscarriage of justice. But then, like, you know, the houses would say, quoting uh, Allah Ya Isa, which means it is the infinite thing you can get. It is the final, th um, uh, it is the final outcome that you must swallow. And there's nothing you can do. You just leave it to God. Mm. The court, of course, refused the PDP's attempt to enter new evidence, saying it was not submitted at the tribunal and therefore has no place in the Supreme Court. So in spite of all the PDP's and Atiku Abubakar's efforts mm. in Chicago, President Tinubu had the last laugh, as one Nigerian newspaper put it. It is quite intriguing. It is quite uh, not only disappointing, but um, it puts Nigeria on a very, very worrying map of global shame. Um, look, the Supreme Court, by this judgment, by this aspect of the judgment you just talked about, mm. is literally relegating the Nigerian constitution to the background or is um, putting 
a, a kind of um, it's taken the electoral law to supersede the constitution the electoral act and the constitution of Nigeria 19 99 is very explicit explicit is very clear it is unambiguous it states that forgery any person who commits forgery is not entitled to run for a political office and nobody i'm not even bothered about whether or not president tunumbu attended you know a university he can have a thousand degrees but to take it to the irreducible minimum, the requirement of the Nigerian Constitution 1999 states clearly that forgery is not to be tolerated. It's a crime. I'm just trying to perceive and uh, to contain <laughs> the anger from within. Uh, the Nigerian Constitution is very explicit on the issue of forgery. Once you forge a document and you submit it to INEC, you automatically should have been disqualified. And let me tell you, the appeal court some days or weeks ago actually um, uh, 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 quashed the election of a PDP member of a House of Representatives from, I think, uh, Adamawa State because he was found to have forged his certificate. Well, to be entirely... Yes, to, and, to be, and let, let, let me quickly right, finish. Sure. Look, in 1999, when President Obasanjo came on board as the, the president, you remember the case of Imam Buhari, Salisu Buhari, rather, the Speaker of um, the Federal... I mean, of the, of the House of Representatives. He was discovered to have forged his certificate. What he did was to dignifyingly step aside and, you know, the country moved on. What I am worried is not so much because Atiku is not the president today. No, I'm, a, I'm worried for Nigeria that has set a precedence that your child and my child probably in the next 10, 15 years, he cannot aspire to any political office or if he does so, heavens forbid, he can go to Awode and get a certificate that is uh, forged and it will end up in the same kind of quagmire that we have found ourselves today. Well, I, I'm glad you used the word quagmire because it, the, the, that situation, and I'm not a spokesperson for anybody, mm. it, it appears to be very murky and unclear. Yes. Because part of the, the problem is not so much the issue of whether a certificate is forged. Mm. The issue really is, was the timeline. is the processes. Yes. Yeah, I mean, yes. the, the court has its processes, and it's bound by those processes. And if you had submitted that as part of your body of evidence in the tribunal, we wouldn't be having this discussion, well, and, this, and maybe the Supreme Court might... Yes, I, I don't know. I mean, court but what I'm saying is that, that hmm. there, are, there, are, there, is a, there are rules and regulations that guide the way the Supreme Court operates. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it'll just be a free-for-all. Of course, yes, but then there are rules and regulations also that are... You have also the spirit and the letters of the law. Mm. You have a situation in which Nigerians are the impartial arbiters in this case and what did we have the timeline for the party or the candidate to secure the relevant documents that will make his case mm. uh, reasonably uh, uh, you know uh, 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 poignant sort of the timeline was such that it was out of his control but then it was submitted to the court and the whole world is aware of what Yeah, but to be fair, you could have started the process. I mean, if you're building a case and you have legal knowledge, mm -hmm. if you're building a case, I mean, you, you've got to look at your case and look at all the parameters. I mean, that's what your lawyers are there to do. <laughs> and you could have started in time. I mean, it, it's actually more painful mm. to those who potentially support your party that simply because you didn't start in time, I mean, there's, it sounds almost lackadaisical that, that you didn't start in time to get the process done. You, you missed 
the chance for the Supreme Court to make the de a very important decision? No, I think there are a lot of issues involved in this, yeah. Charles. First of all, um, the simplistic nature of our legal system, the laws, the way they are couched, the way they are uh, kind of written, mm. they tend to give you not only the impression, but the kind of definition of a clear, you know, a clear judgment that will come once you are able to submit even the basic um, uh, uh, requirements. And um, nobody wanted, I mean, we didn't want to be in this position, discussing the uh, credentials, the qualities of any opponent. We expected that we will have a clean election devoid of fraud, mm. of rigging, and of malpractices that um, will be reminiscent of what we saw with um, President Goodluck Jonathan at the closure of the uh, election you know, uh, uh, count. Uh, he picked his phone and called his, um, his opponent to say congratulations. We didn't want to have an aspect of our political life in which we will be so embroiled in, 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 in litigation upon litigation because clearly the points are there for everybody to see. But then here we are. The Nigerian legal system, sometimes I made an, a, an example someday, I don't know whether it's on this platform, and this is what I said. Our laws are such that the judges or those in charge of the process can come out with plausible, convincing, and very uh, uh, seemingly reliable argument any which way the mm. judgment is given. It is like you have um, somebody with, um, with two pigeons clocked, I mean, uh, uh, locked in his arms. And I say, Charles, take, you, you know, choose one is live. If you, are, if you happen to choose the one that is live, I mean, that is not live, I'll give you a dead pigeon. I'll say you, you've lost. If you choose the one that is alive, I will squeeze it and kill it. <laughs> And then give you a like dead pigeon that. anyway. Well, I, I don't mean to so laugh at the fact that you're, you're squeezing an innocent yes. pigeon so, to death. <laughs> so but, this is the but way. But just the way you said it. This is it, the way funny. I see the judiciary right. operating. Anyway, the, the APC says the verdict means that the will of the Nigerian people have now has now been affirmed and confirmed. There was but, no, but you disagree. No, right? I disagree totally. The mm. will of the Nigerian people cannot be quantified in a percentage of thirty-seven. 37% of the total vote uh, cast, hmm. APC, 63% PDP and Labour put together. So if you are taking it on a political equilibrium in terms of the scores. Yeah, the opposition the certainly opposition beat, beat, certainly beat the, um, the, the, ruling uh, the, the, the ruling party. But, so yeah. as it is now, you have a party that is in power that is actually operating from not only a minority sentiment but a minority point of view a minority disposition and a minority attitude and a minority government in charge so it cannot be the will of the nigerian so, so people so given the fact that that is an ineluctable situation there's nothing you can do about absolutely. it absolutely what we need to be talking about is reforms going forward. Mm. And in terms of the reforms you would like to see, what might those be? I mean, there'd been some concern, for instance, that petitions are not concluded before the swearing in. Yeah, I think the way we are going, if we don't rejig, if we don't reset uh, or reformat the electoral laws in Nigeria, we will just be oscillating. Yeah, but how would you like them to be reformed? I'd like to see a situation Reset. in which more, more recourse is given to the Nigerian constitution in both application and interpretation of the law with respect to the electoral process. Reduce the literature 
on the electoral laws because it does appear to me from this experience as if the electoral law or the 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 the, the, the act establishing the National Electoral Commission and the extant laws that the commission is operating with, they tend to give a, a kind of leeway for smart guys in the system to exploit and um, they will wait only for elections to be concluded and they pop up and exploit those loopholes. Right. And to me, the rejigging of the system has to be holistic completely holistic, um, starting with what I just said, you know, a while ago. Mm. You cannot have a situation in which 67, I mean, 63% of the population... Yeah, so, so you would like... The, I like a the, situation where the Constitution is kind of amended to give the president to he have... He must get about least, 50%. At least 50 Right, okay, or maybe 51%. 51%. Right. And then um, you, you can... The, the second thing is to ensure that the national, uh, the independent national electoral commission um, does not operate like a hawk. Mm. It must be subjected to queries, questions, and it must give answers. It is not um, a situation where you come on the final day of the elections and then you change the rules midway. Mm. If, we, if we had to jettison completely the 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 uh, the 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 what not IREV the the beavers beavers right if we are to jettison beavers and IREV let's go analog and then we count it painstakingly and get to the finish line but if we must deploy technology then we must be bound are bounded mm. by the rules I mean what's of the technology? point of deploying technology Techno if you weren't technology using it and spending all the it. money on and we spent over 360 mm. billion so in, in that context do you think the chairman of INEC should be forced to resign now for instance for for whatever mistakes were made and let there be a clean slate I think in a in a more organized more civil mm. and more uh, uh, a proactive society in England <laughs> by uh, about now the the annex chairman should have long well it wouldn't you know, arise in you know, the UK in, it I mean, arise that, that in the situation UK. just wouldn't arise <laughs> we as have as that. a situation in yeah. which before a global television audience Nigeria was put to shame mm. how before you the 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 uh, world journalists he told the entire world that, oh, we're going to deploy technology. We're going to ensure that it's going to be transparent. We will <coughs> ensure that the beavers and the IREV will mm. work. And then if there is cataclysm at the end of the tunnel, he should take the humble pie yeah. and say, I have failed. I, I think a lot of people would agree with we, you. We, and he, and he, 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 may well, he may well still do that because the, the elections are not entirely over. I We've feel got We've got uh, um, off-season elections I feel, coming I feel, up. I feel terrible in the inside mm. because the <laughs> the INEC chairman. We grew up together. Right. So you know him personally. I know him personally, and it and you're disappointed me that yeah. you know that my brother, that with whom we grew up together, cannot deliver. Maybe he had his own shortcomings and his own constraints and his own limitations. I don't know. I have not spoken to him, but I am disappointed yeah. because I well, want to believe that uh, I, I, I saw a situation in which he could have done better. Right. Well, you're, you're not alone. But le let me move away from that because we've got a few minutes left for the chat. Uh, what about the, I mean, getting away from INEC and all mm. the rest of it and the, and the courts. What about the political culture that prevails in the parties that allows the kind of brazen attempts to rig elections? What might be the way around that? The, what I have seen in my two or three years, you know, uh, experience in, in politics is that there is the Nigerian factor that applies. You have a lot of godfathers and godsons. You have rules um, 
and constitutions of the parties that are not necessarily being scrupulously followed. Mm. You have um, people who will... Yeah, but some would say, who are you to, if you can't get your house in order, the political parties, which are the vessels yes. via which you know, people contest elections and move on to office. I mean, these are the people who are going to take over yes. office. I mean, if you can't get your house in order, I mean, why would you expect anyone else? You're talking about the Nigerian factor. It's pervasive, isn't yes, it? Yes, it's pervasive. And then also the issue of money, Charles. Uh, it is very difficult for a newcomer, anybody that, however popular you might be, to get in and break through. Yeah, but how do you fix that? that you fix that by ensuring that, first of all, the political parties need mm. to sit down and do a SWOT analysis. Right. So maybe the, we could start with the PDP. With the, with the PDP, of course. Yeah. I mean, you're there a has, leading member of the PDP. There has to be some fundamental changes. Yeah. Before, I mean, maybe you guys should start looking. Because, I mean, you, as I said, you're a PDP member. Though it could be said that you're not a part of the Politburo no, of no, the I'm PDP. No, no, I'm not. Um, but after all the divisions and the internecine fighting mm -hmm. I mean, that we saw there in public, I mean, within the party, some, that some might say actually cost you the election. Because, I mean, there were divisions. I mean, Peter Obi was part of your party, he broke away. Uh, other people were part of your party, they broke away. Um, are, you, are you personally still very much in sync with the party or are you out of kilter with it? No, I am totally in sync with the party. I think every party has its own, you know, um, mm. highs and lows, has its own, you know, um, you know, trouble and troubling periods. What I think we need to do as a party is to sit down and look at where, you know, certain things have gone wrong. Mm. And if there are people within the party that, like you said, that have constituted a cog in the wheel of progress, and have cost us this election, and once and if and when they are identified, uh, sanctions should 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 apply. Uh, this is a serious business in which uh, people have invested their time, money, effort, and everything. And then at the end of the day, you discover that by just um, uh, an act. Uh, Acts of um, a few people and their shenanigans mm. have cost us dearly. But they have not only cost us, they've cost Nigerians. Because right now... Yeah, but they would argue that, yeah. you're, that they, they did what they did because the, peop, the powers that be in the party, party didn't follow the rules. No, no, not at all. I think there was, uh, <laughs> there, there was a problem. Very some briefly, people, Some people about wanted to be Nigeria's president at all costs. When they lost, they thought it is always better to throw away the water, the wash hand basin, and the baby. And that was and what And the happened. house as And well. the house, you know. And that was what Drown happened. Drown them all. There was no way PDP would have lost this election if we hadn't attrition from within. Yeah. And That's what uh, we like call I said, internecine fighting. fighting. I mean, you you killed between. yourselves. Absolutely. So yeah. it is now left for the leadership of the party and all those that are in the top echelons of leadership right. to look at some of these constraints and limitations and see uh, where we go from here. Yeah. Okay. I want to believe that um, the future is bright and I want to congratulate our own presidential candidate for uh, Atiku Abubakar for you know, showing Nigerians. Uh, bringing, you know, the 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 the, the inadequacies. Not not only, not only the inadequacies. No, not only the constraints. No, but the clear and present danger of the corrupt practices in right. the system. And I want to congratulate you for putting a brave face on things and coming here to uh, robustly defend your party's position. Dr. Ladan Salihu is a PDP stalwart and former Director General of the Federal Radio Corporation of Nigeria. Thank you very much indeed. You're welcome, Charles, for having me. Thanks.